How we doing today? We're gonna go ahead and focus on on some very important scriptures. This is informing on why we should not abide as to the changes of doctrine or any changes of uh, circumstances in church or maybe there might be some weird uh, ideas. There can be, uh, you know what, I have a great idea as to what we can do to advance our our church here. Many might say, you know what, let's bring in the lights, let's bring in the purple lights, let's bring in the the, the drums, let's bring in the, uh, the, the techno sound into the church and whatnot. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and explain some very important scriptures as to defining why we should not do all those things. All right. So looking at Romans chapter 12, verse 2, as we can see here, and it mentions here on verse 2, Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. So I'll go ahead and mention this again. According to the scriptures in Romans chapter 12 verse 2, it mentions that we should not, and I'll repeat it again, according to the uh, to the scripture here, we can see that it is understanding that we should not be changing away as to what looks worldly, or as to what defines as to a uh, very undeniable and mentioned that this kind of looks uh, like a like a club in a sense or it kind of sounds in a sense of a as a rock concert in this church okay so it's given us the understanding that we should not uh, conform to this world but rather it says here renew your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, so we must be working against the things of this world with our minds. Okay, so we must change those things and remember to keep the the old paths according to Jeremiah. It mentions here Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 right there. It gives us the understanding that this is the Lord speaking, and it and the Lord says in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16, you know, I can give you some history according to the scriptures here, but we're going to go ahead and just go straight to the verses, okay? So we'll do some historical backgrounds later on. Right now we're focusing on, on why we should not conform to this world, bringing it to the church. It mentions here that, Thus saith the Lord, verse 16, Stand ye in the ways of and see and stand ye in the ways and see and ask I'm sorry and ask for the old paths where it is a good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls okay so okay then it goes on and it mentions but they said we will not walk in therein so we can obviously see that by the end of this verse you know, many are not wanting to change uh, to the old paths. Rather, they want to go about it to what, whatever the world might bring in in those, um, in those days. And today, we have so much influences from the world, and so many uh, things that want, want to uh, invade the the, uh, the old paths and the traditionals and whatnot. What the church really should be. Okay, so according to the scriptures, God has mentioned. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Notice, we should ask for it. We need to be asking, what is the old path? What is the traditional thing that we must do? Okay, so analyze it. What is the scripture saying here? It's actually, you know, it's very basic. It's not difficult to understand that we need to be asking constantly to look for the old, old ways. And it mentions here, where is the good way and walk walk therein. That means that you should go about it. You should go in into that tradition 
or into what the Lord has mentioned. Okay. And tradition is another thing that many are against. There are some good things and some bad things on tradition. But here we're looking and we can understand that the Lord has given us a, a commandment as to the understanding to seek the old paths. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and focus on another part of the scripture, very important scripture. In 1 John chapter 2, okay, 1 John chapter 2, the epistle of John, 1 John chapter 2, let me move the, uh, okay, hopefully that helps a little. Yeah, I think it did, kind of. All right, here we are. Let me move this a little bit here. And here it is in verse... Let's start in verse 16. Here. It mentions here... It says... 1 John chapter 2, verse 16 mentions... Oh, let's go to 15. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're going live. Here it is. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, if any man love the world. Check it out. The love of the Father is not in him. Okay, let's go ahead and meditate on verse 15. It says, we should not love the things of the world, right? All those things that are in the world, we should not bring it in to the church. We need to seek the old paths. If any man love the world, notice the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And I'll go ahead and focus on 16. What do we see many whom enjoy and love selling and, and, and uh, contributing to merchandise as to Christian music? We go to a Christian store and we see something pretty particular. There are some of them are called a Christian rock or rap. You know, you can, you can name a, a few there, Skillet or P.O.D., which I don't know if they're even Christian at all anymore. Um, well, obviously, right? Uh, and then you got Lecrae and whatever, you know, you can, you can name, I can name a few, but you can, you can obviously see when you go to a Christian store, you see this, they have what is called the lust of the flesh. They have that. They want to look good. They want to look nice. They want to look particular. They want you to look at them so that you can buy their product. But you notice that they have lots of, uh, they have lots of love for the world. They go and they have no problem singing into the, with the world, with the world, and, and saying this and that, what not representing God, but it just doesn't, it doesn't jive in, God, in the scriptures. Verse 17 says, And the world passeth away, and the lust there, thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. So verse 17 closes, And the world will pass away. You know, Lecrae, P.O.D., they'll, they'll all pass away. All those styles, country, rat, uh, Christian, I'm sorry, or whatever. Cor corridos, you got the, the, the Mexican uh, influence going into the church as well with the Mexican style. I'm not against Mexicans. I'm talking about the style of music. All right? I'm a, I'm a Mexican-American myself. So anyways, it's not about me. I'm just trying to give you the understanding that it's not that it's not uh, accordingly to bring in those influences into the church, into the house of God. God has said it, not me. Open your scriptures and you'll see it yourselves. I love this scripture right here. It confirms as to what we should bring into the church or what sorts of music or songs should we be singing. It says, Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. 
Amen to that. And I'll go ahead and say amen again because it, it doesn't say anything about bringing in different sorts of styles or bring in whatever you feel. No. It says that the word of Christ should be in there. Whenever we're singing, we need to make sure that we're singing with all wisdom. Understanding what's coming out of our mouths. That it's teaching us one another. Every time we're, we're singing to the Lord, we, we need to be aware that we're learning something from that. So you notice that many of those rappers that call themselves Christians, they're blabbering. All right, and I'll go ahead and say this to you, just for bonus. I used to uh, rap, you know, Christian rap, but I wasn't reading my scriptures closely. But now that I see, I don't do it anymore. Now, again, this is not about me, but this is just, if you love the Lord, you will keep His commandments. And it's not about uh, your your style or what whatnot. It's about what God's Word says. Again, so I'll remind it to you. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. You notice that. All right. So I'll go ahead and close it with that. And uh, God bless you guys.